Excellency, Lady Williams, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last night of the Dukes, held here in St. Michael's Cave by the regimental band and corps of drums of the 1st Battalion, the Duke of Wellington's Regiment. The band are joined tonight by guest conductor Mr. Hector Cortez and soloists Joanna Cortez and William Gomez and also the Canticle Choir in a program which covers a spectrum of musical styles from classical to modern, from the dramatic to the humorous. To get the evening off to a rousing start, the band will play a concert march called Task Force. This was composed by Anthony Wakefield and used as the theme tune to the film Battle for the Falklands. Ladies and gentlemen, task force.
And now, on to tonight's first solo spot. Would you please give a warm welcome to an expert classical guitarist, Mr. William Gomez. Those of you who saw The Deer Hunter will never forget the most haunting theme, Cavettina. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. William Gomez. very great pleasure to be here tonight and in fact it's a double pleasure first of all because I was asked to take part in this the farewell concert of the Dukes and also because it's 28 years nearly to the day when I gave the first ever concert in St. Michael's Cave on the one hand, it's a sad occasion because we are seeing a number of friends leaving and I hope that possibly every time they hear the Cavatina they will remember tonight and they will remember the friends they leave behind and in fact the people of Gibraltar. And going back again 28 years, um, I finished off that concert with a, a piece entitled Hota and I would like to play that piece again tonight. Jota by Francisco Tarrega. <laughs>
But now, for a change of tempo entirely, we move on to a dramatic composition by a serving member of the band, bandsman Jerry Young, entitled Rock Rondo.
The next item is entitled Neil Diamond in Concert, an exciting arrangement by Bob Loden, which in contains such well-known melodies as Song Sung Blue, Heart Light, You Don't Bring Me Flowers, Sweet Caroline, and America.
And now for the second of our soloist's spots, please welcome the charming and talented Joanna Cortez with her husband, guest conductor, Hector Cortez. <laughs> Joanna will sing for us tonight the Nun's Chorus by Strauss.
The next item is entitled The Dam Busters, a march composed by Eric Coates and arranged for military bands by W.J. Dutoit. This march was written as the theme tune for the film The Dam Busters. So for our farewell to RAF Gibraltar, we give you the Dam Busters, which will be conducted tonight by our guest conductor, Mr. Hector Cortez.
The last piece that you have just heard was composed by Verdi and was played at the opening of the Suez Canal, entitled Aida. The arrangement played tonight featured the six fanfare trumpeters of the regimental band. This piece has a special significance for us as it is a regimental march of the Blues and Royals, the regiment of our Colonel-in-Chief, the Duke of Wellington. It was played on parade three years ago when he presented us with the new colours that you see here this evening. And now, before we continue, I would like to introduce the commanding officer of the 1st Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Johnny Walker, to set the scene for our farewell to Gibraltar. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the officers, the non-commissioned officers and the soldiers of the regiment, I welcome you to the last night of the Dukes. Most of you will know that we hand over to the 1st Battalion, the Queen's Regiment, at the end of this month, after a little over 22 months here in Gibraltar. This concert is, a num is one of a number of events uh, in the build-up to our farewell to the people of Gibraltar and to the members of the three armed services on the rock. When we arrived here uh, in March 1983, we set out to integrate fully with all sections of the local community. And as a relative newcomer to the battalion here on the rock, I can see that you have allowed and encouraged us to do exactly that in a wide range of activities. The enjoyment and fulfillment of our tour has therefore been enhanced by the support and help of a great number of organizations and individuals. And for this, we really are most grateful. I must, however, single out His Excellency and Lady Williams for their constant guidance, their interest in us, and their friendship. We are very grateful for this, and I know that I speak for the whole battalion in thanking them both. There are others who have become great friends, and others still who could not be here this evening. But with the aid of the GBC cameras here tonight, they will be able to see a recording of the concert next Sunday. Now you will have noticed that we're raising money here this evening for the Army Benevolent Fund and regimental charities. In the Catrick Hospital at present, there is a young corporal who in March 1983 shortly before we came to Gibraltar, had a serious car crash. He is still unconscious. His wife has left him, and his father died recently. His mother lives 50 miles from the hospital and visits him regularly. And I intend to make a donation to assist her with her travel expenses in the hope that it will help Corporal Dwight recover at least a measure of his former good health. Now, this is just one example of how your money will be used, and I thank you all most sincerely, including those who've sent us checks but could not be here this evening. I must also thank our special guests, Hector and Joanna Cortez, William Gomez and Canticor for contributing to the evening free of their time, as well as the Gibraltar Tourist Office for all their help in setting up this evening's performance. But now, on with the show. Many of you will have seen that marvelous film, Chariots of Fire. More recently, you may even have recognized the theme from the TV coverage of the Los Angeles Olympic Games. On a similar note, I'm sure that you will all remember Jane Torville and Christopher Dean's gold medal at the Sarajevo Olympics last winter, where they danced to Ravel's Bolero. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Recall the magic of Torval and Dean with Bolero, arranged this evening by none other than bandsman Jerry Youngs again. But first, imagine the flashing feet on the beach, the bursting lungs, and the long baggy shorts of chariots of fire.
I would now like to introduce to you the bandmaster, Mr. Taylor, who since he has never been asked for This Is Your Life, he has decided to play a piece that he himself has written, a tune entitled My Life. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Taylor. Your Excellency, Lady Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. <laughs> I just thought, in my own modest little way, that perhaps you having watched me now for probably the best part of an hour, and probably on many other occasions, that you'd be wondering a little about me. So I thought, well, we'll do something about it, and I'll tell you the story a very brief story of my life. It didn't take long for my parents to realize that they had a musical genius on their hands. <laughs> you mock me. Well, they had. I actually wrote my first symphony I wrote my first symphony at the tender age of five. I did, and it was super. I've, I've learned a little about music since, not much, but a little, and I've decided that it wasn't really a symphony, so I've renamed it. It's Opus One, Number One. Would you like to hear it? That's good. It just so happens we've got it with us tonight. <laughs> Opus one, number one.
Thank you. Well, like all young lads, my parents decided that they'd perhaps get me into some of one of these paramilitary organisations that abound, especially in UK. You've one or two out here as well, I think. So I had a quick squint around what was available and ended up choosing the Scouts. Now, the reason I chose the Scouts, I had an ulterior motive, I always have, was that they had a band. Now I thought, they've got a band, I've got a tune, why not? So, I added another string to my bow and did an arrangement. Now, the band really wasn't quite up to it, unfortunately. Um, I offered the tune, actually, the first four scouts, and they refused it. Thank you, madam, for those few kind words. <laughs> but anyway, I took it along to my scout band, and they looked at it. We rehearsed it for weeks and weeks and weeks, ready for a, a scout band competition, an area finals. We went along and played it, and it sounded a little like this. As I said, not much of a band. <laughs> Having had a taste for the, the military life in the Scouts, I decided that my future lay with the forces. So I joined up, joined an army band, and horror of horrors, my first posting was Germany. Now, it's a very peculiar place, Germany, very peculiar people, and I'm sure our compare tonight will back me up on that. Um, but bandsmen hate it. They really do not like being stationed in Germany. The reason is they, the Germans have these funny pagan rituals during the summer called beer fests. <laughs> these are, are strange things. They entail marching through the streets of a, a large town for about five or ten miles so that the, the local people can throw sweets at you. Very strange. Then they force you to go into a, a large marquee, probably the largest marquee I've ever seen in my life. Sit you down and force you to drink large sort of steins of brown frothy stuff. And bandsmen just don't like it. It just... <laughs> being forced to do this. And of course, being polite, they, they have to try one or two just to, to show willing, really. And the, they don't like Germany at all. But in these marquees, inevitably, there is a, a German band sitting in the middle, playing. And they're drinking this funny stuff, and the longer they play, the louder they play, and they get worse and worse and worse. But we once played at a beer fest in Munich, and there was a very, very good band there, and they played a tune that you might recognize. Germany, I went 
to Nella Hall where they train army bandmasters. Now, people always ask, where is Nella Hall? And I found that certainly around here these days, the easiest way to say is by the rugby ground at Twickenham. And everybody around here knows where that is. From there, I was posted to the Dukes at Catrick. And the first thing I was told was that we were going to Gibraltar. Now, I've deliberately skipped a little bit that I would like to go back to in a minute. But I was posted to the Dukes and told we were coming to Gibraltar. And they said, the band will have a whale of a time out there. They'll thoroughly enjoy it. And we have. I only have one small complaint. We get invited to all the best parties, the very best parties. The trouble is, by the time we get a drink, everybody's left. <laughs> so I, I will admit that that is my only complaint. So I would like to dedicate the next part of my life to the hosts and hostesses of all the parties we've attended but never actually spoken to anyone at. <laughs> I must add that this next piece is very quiet and requires absolute silence. I thought about playing the song, Where Did You Get That Hat? But um, it's quite something, that, isn't it? Who let him in, by the way? While at Nello Hall, they say that one thing you must never do to audiences is to quote technical terms at them. But I'm going to break that rule tonight. We'd like to play the same thing again, but pizzicato. Again, I must ask for absolute silence, please.
I said I was, I'd skipped a little bit. I'd like now to go back to that a little bit. The other thing they told me when they said we were coming out to Gibraltar was that they, they would like me and the band to make a record. Nobody's mentioned the record tonight. We have a few on sale at the back if you're interested on the way out. <laughs> In fact, I'd made a deal with a tourist board that with certain exceptions, you don't get out without one. To actually decide what to put on a record is very, very difficult. Everything has been done by military bands. There is very little that's original left. And it took me a long, long time. I spent days and weeks walking the shops, listening to records, looking at records, all sorts. And in the end, I resorted to second-hand shops, antique shops, anywhere where there might be something that was original. Now, in Richmond in North Yorkshire, which was near Catrick, I found in the back streets a tiny little antique shop. I think there was more dust in it than antiques, but it was, it was open. And I found a pile of 78s in a corner and blew the dust off them, started leafing through them, and found one where the title looked sort of vaguely familiar. I asked the guy in the shop if he could play it, and he produced a gramophone and a little white dog. <laughs> Completely fooled me what the dog was for, but he produced his gramophone and a little white dog. Put it on, wound it up, and away it went.
The next item is our guest ensemble. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the well-known Canticle Choir. Four short items for you this evening. We're going to start with an Irish number, My Loves and Our Bootus. On a personal note, I'd like to say a very big thank you to Mr. Taylor and the band over the last year and a half. As head of music at St. Christopher's, and with my counterpart from St. George's somewhere, they've been a great help to us both in the service schools, and we're very, very grateful for their help. Thank you very much. Our finale tonight is called The Seafarer, a rousing nautical rhapsody on halyard, capstan and hauling shanties, composed by Haydn Wood, himself a Halifax composer, and contains such well-known shanties as Hullabaloo Ballet, Rio Grande, 
Leave Her, Johnny, Leave Her, The Drunken Sailor, and other well-known tunes. We now have a close association with the Royal Navy in Gibraltar. So, for our farewell and tribute to the senior service, we give you the seafarer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Your Excellency, Lady Williams, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being both a warm and appreciative audience. We hope that you have enjoyed the last night of the Dukes. We are very sad to leave Gibraltar and the many friends that we have made here. But as always in the services, our happy memories will remain with us. And who knows, if the posting cycle works true to form, we'll be back here in 30 years time. <laughs> Your Excellency, Lady Williams, ladies and gentlemen, farewell.
The Chief Minister and Lady Hassan were among the guests who watched the parade with the Governor from the balcony of the com convent. The old guard was provided by the Duke of Wellington's regiment and the new guard by the One Queen's. a display by the bands of both regiments. The standard of the Duke of Wellington's regiment was then lowered. And the regiment marched off to the tune of Old Lang Syne. At the end of the ceremony, the standard of the One Queen's was hoisted over the convent guardroom. Tomorrow, the Loretto nuns celebrate the 400th anniversary of the birth of their foundress, Mary Ward. Born in Yorkshire during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, Mary Ward founded the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary, establishing convents and schools around the world for the education and the Christian training of girls. 
The Irish branch of the Institute was founded in 1822 by Mother Teresa Ball. The first convent was named Loretto, hence the title Loretta Nuns. The Loretta Nuns first arrived in Gibraltar in 1845 and established two convents on the rock, one in the town area and the other in Europa. As part of the celebrations, all past pupils of both colleges have been invited to a coffee morning tomorrow from 10 to 11.30. They'll have a chance to walk around the school, see an exhibition of old school photographs, and there will also be an assembly on the theme of Mary Ward's life and the work of the Loreto nuns in Gibraltar from the 1800s. probably see yourself. A lot of people have braved the weather, braved the rain, a very special way for the television cameras there from Balthazar to come and see the Three Kings Cavalcade this year. And it is really fair that this cavalcade should have continued tonight because, as you will see in a moment, so much work has gone into the floats and the preparation and construction of these floats that it had to go on no matter what. The second king, Caspar, there he is, waving to the children as well. Somehow it seems to me they're going a little bit faster than normal this year, probably to try and get out of the rain if it starts again. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't. And there comes our third king, Melchior. There they are, Melchior, Caspar, Balthazar, the three kings, the cavalcade is in their honour, and of course they have to lead that three kings cavalcade. Oh, a touch of beauty this year, in the form of Miss Karina Hollands, Miss Gibraltar, 1984. There she is, braving the weather as well. I can imagine it's quite chilly sitting on that open top car there. But of course, Miss Gibraltar does her duties as she does and as she should. And there she is, greeting everybody who's live Bow Street. This is a new addition to Gibraltar. This is the emergency unit of St. John's Ambulance. There it comes, a great big showpiece for St. John Ambulance in Gibraltar District 390. And there they are, and rightly so, showing themselves off to the people of Gibraltar. But you never know when you might do that. Hopefully never. But, ah, still what's happened to St. John's become the now famous in Gibraltar, St. John's Majorettes. Looks like some American pageant this every time I see those Majorettes, but there they go. What great style. You never know, there might be a few Miss Gibraltars in that crowd. I must tell you about a couple of innovations in this year's cavalcade. We won't know the final results until tonight when we have a traditional cavalcade dance. So I'm afraid that we're going to see the floats go by tonight, but we won't know who the prize winners are, which will have to be kept in suspense until sometime tomorrow or even Monday. Well, here's the first of the floats. First, simply because it arrived at Casemates first, and that is the float presented this year by the Royal Air Force. Peter Pan, as you've clearly seen, it is Captain Hook's ship. It's years ago that I read Peter Pan, so I must admit to you that I can't remember what the name of the ship was. But there it is in all its glory. You might not see it at the moment, but it's also waving its skull and crossbones flag, the pirate flag. Children love this event. It's probably the children's event of the year in Gibraltar. There it goes, the Peter Pan ship presented as float number one this year by the Royal Air Force. And in wet weather, what better to go through the cavalcade than in a ship, and a floating craft. The Royal Naval Hospital, as far as I can remember, uh, probably, probably, and you must excuse me, RNH, if I'm wrong, their first ever appearance at the Three Kings Cavalcade. Here comes the RNH with one of the popular children's television programs, Fraggle Rock. Boobo's there, Gobo's there, Cog is there, Wembley's there, they're all on there. Fraggle Rock presented this year's float number two by the Royal Naval Hospital. The applause, of course, from people in Main Street and very special applause this year, of course, because all those children have also braved the weather, mums and dads keeping their fingers crossed so that their little kids won't get wet in the parade. The Gibraltar Regiment, pipes, drums, there they go, also playing their part. 
in the Three Kings Cavalcade this year, with drum major Bob Walker leading them as usual. A quick break there, and that gives me a chance to tell you that uh, although we're not going to know the results of the judges, oh, I can't tell that you at the moment because here comes another play. The float presented by the Property Services Association, which has had a very good run of wins in the past few years. Cinderella at midnight from the PSA, and what a great idea this has been. As you will see in just a second, well, the Cinderella characters are there already in their castle, looking over the veranda, and here comes a fountain, and this is great. Half pumpkin, half stagecoach. Exactly at midnight, when the whole thing was converting from the stagecoach back into the pumpkin, the time that Cinderella lost her glass slipper, etc., etc. I could go on, but who doesn't know the story of Cinderella? And a happy new year to you as well, PSA. Thank you very much for your contribution. We move on with a very brand new firm, Gibraltar Ship Repair Limited, and their first contribution. There is a Smurf, better known in Gibraltar, unfortunately, as a Pitufo. Unfortunately, because the program is not on GBC at the moment, but they're known on Spanish TV as the Pitufos. And the reason why the GSL has put a Pitufo float on this year is because the men, the workers of GSL, wear blue overalls and are known popularly on the yard as the Pitufos. So they decided to cash in on that, and there is their Smurf, together with their ship that's been repaired and the steel shop in the shape of a mushroom or a toadstool at the back of that float. <coughs> there goes GSL. Right, the judges of the floats this year are the Air Commodore's wife, Mrs. Pack, Mrs. Hicks, that's wife of Commander Hicks, Commander of HMS Rook, Olympia Reyes, local artist, Pepe Vaughan, ex-director of tourism, and Mario Sanguinetti, director of public works. And whilst on the subject of public works, here comes the PWD float this year. Great little railways. It's funny how television programs, GBC television series, keep popping up year after year in the cavalcade. That's the great little railway from the public works department, PWD lines, and a very, very clever touch. The number of the locomotion there is, in fact, the two phone numbers of the Public Works Department, 72129 and 77294. Very subtle touch there for the PWD. Great little railways. Now, this next float, float number six, is very much in context. This is one of two floats that have been presented this year by Fantasy Youth Club, and they have chosen the theme of International Youth Year. United Nations declared that 1985 would be International Youth Year with the music of Stevie Wonder in the background or not, and there it is. The IYY, one of two floats with a completely perfectly working fountain in the center from Fantasy Youth Club. There goes Mary on her donkey, and you wouldn't believe because you might not be able to see them, but you, you do see them there. In the basket that the donkey's carrying, there are a couple of ducks and a couple of chickens as well. Mind you, the donkey has done his bit for the cavalcade and he's fouled up a whole lot. Well, a very big area of Gaysmade Square tonight. There's our next float tonight. Float number seven, presented by Emery Son Sons Bakeries. And there is a wedding scene on this float. A little bit young, but according to this, Craig marries Lee tonight on the 5th of January 1985. There you are, there's the bride and the groom, Lee and Craig, standing there, top of the float, of course, by the place. The Sea Scouts Band of Gibraltar always adding an extra touch of pageantry, of drama to any event in Gibraltar. In fact, before the Three Kings paraded tonight in the cavalcade, they had already visited children in hospital who unfortunately have been there over Christmas and who are there tonight and will not be able to see the cavalcade. We have another float, and here it comes. This is the second float presented by Fantasy Youth Club this year, and again, it's something that's very much in vogue now, those BMX bicycles. Bicycle motocross, they're portrayed by Fantasy Youth Club in their second contribution to this year's cavalcade. A lot of preparation has gone into the cavalcade. A lot of work has been done today since 3 o'clock this afternoon. Officials have been at Casemates. The Gibraltar Police has been there at Casemates as well, organising people and making sure that everything goes off to a great start. St Mark's goes around the world, almost missed it. St Mark's Youth Club 
And I must read you this little bit that's included in the back. Bright eyes, smiling faces, little children in all places, yellow, red, black and white, playing together in the lights. They could teach us a thing or two, and then our problems would be few. Like them, we could live in peace and make all the wars cease. Those are the wishes of St. Mark's. Let's hope it comes true and make 1985 a peaceful year for them and for you. I apologise to those participants in the cavalcade who unfortunately did not feature in this report. But it looks as if the standard was extremely high this year. I wish I could have been there to have seen it myself.